slide down and we're going to call the meeting to order. First order of business is to call the roll. Alderman Barnhill. Present. Alderman Blanton. Here. Alderman Caesar. Here. Alderman Peterson. Here. Alderman Berger. Present. Vice Mayor Brown. Present. Alderman Potts. Present. Alderman Baggett. Present. And the mayor's here also, so everybody's in attendance. We're going to begin tonight with an invocation uh, followed by a Pledge of Allegiance, which I will lead. Where, uh, we are in the uh, uh, sixth night of Chinooka, and uh, we're honored tonight to have Marsha Ramey uh, from our Jewish community uh, who, who came here following uh, her husband uh, who worked at Nissan, but she grew up uh, uh, in Detroit, in a large Jewish population there, and uh, we're honored that she would come tonight and share with us a prayer. So if we'll all stand. Our God and God of our ancestors, we ask your blessings for our city, for its government, leaders, and first responders, and for all who exercise just and rightful authority. Teach them insights from your Torah that they may administer all affairs of state fairly, that peace and security, happiness and prosperity, justice and freedom may for, forever abide in our midst. Creator of all flesh, bless all the inhabitants of our city with your spirit. May citizens of all races and creeds forge a common bond in true harmony to banish hatred and bigotry, and to safeguard the ideals and free institutions that are the pride and glory of our city, state, and country. May this land, under your providence, be an influence for good throughout the world, uniting all people in peace and freedom, helping them to fulfill the vision of your prophet. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they experience war anymore. And let us say, Amen. Amen. And I would also like to thank the mayor, the aldermen, and the entire city for the amazing support that you have given us with our first public candle lighting tomorrow night at the East Battlefield, uh, East Flank Battlefield Park at 6 p.m. The entire public is welcome. Please come. We will be lighting the appropriate number of candles, and we will have songs. There will be a food truck. Uh, it will be really an amazing night, and thank you for all the publicity, the banners in the main street. And I just, when I was waiting to come in, I saw you have a, a post on your Facebook page, and our F Jewish Franklin, Tennessee Facebook group is now almost 350 strong. Um, and thank you so much for the support of the city and all of you. Thank you. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Steve. Now, the next item on the agenda is an opportunity for citizens to make comments. Uh, we do have a number of speaker cards, and those will be uh, you, uh, allowed to speak during the item, but I do have two speaker cards uh, for, for items not on the agenda, and I would invite Armando Arzati and uh, Julio Giuseppe to come up, and I would give each of you two minutes, and if I butchered your name, I apologize. So two minutes, please, and uh, come to the podium. Okay. Thank you so much. State uh, your name and address. Okay. So my name is uh, Julio Quispe. I come from come all the way to the microphone, please. I come from uh, Workers Dignity out in Nashville, uh, 1233 Lewis Street. And this is uh, my name is Armando Arce. Uh, my address is 277 Tusculum Road in Nashville, Tennessee. I come from Workers Dignity, too. Uh, so I'll start and then I'll try to interpret for him. Uh, so we come here from Workers Dignity uh, in Nashville. Uh, we're at Workers Centers who uh, protects the rights uh, for low wage workers, specifically contractors. As you guys know, uh, Nashville has been growing expansively. And unfor unfortunately with that, there's been a lot of wage stuff. And that has been um, transferring over to Franklin, which is why we're here because we have a few workers that did work at uh, Legacy Cool Spring Apartments, uh, which, is be, which is still being developed by GCI uh, Constructions. Um, 
so yeah, you, we just want to uh, be here to make you guys aware of this big problem that we have. We have like at least five to 10 workers that come with this problem of wage theft. They do the work and then they get promised that they're going to get paid by the next week and the next week and they never do. And then the contractors leave. And unfortunately, they just don't uh, have the means to get a lawyer to protect them for this or to get their uh, wages back, which is that's why they come to us and we... Um, uh, they become members and then we are able to uh, build a campaign around them where they can uh, recover their wages. Um, and I'll just let Armando share a little bit more. I'm sorry, we're going to speak in Spanish and he's going to Come to the mic. I'm going to speak in Spanish, but he's going to translate. Okay. Um, de hecho, hemos hecho varias acciones en Legacy Apartments, pero hemos sido no escuchados y a la vez también nos hemos sentido agredidos porque nos cerraron una de las calles principales. Uh, so we've been doing a couple of uh, actions out there outside of legacy apartments in the public area and we've been um, assaulted there by uh, a few people there that they blocked off the roads. Uh, nosotros creemos que es una calle pública y ellos asumieron que es una calle privada y nos sentimos amenazados por ello porque no tienen derecho a encerrarnos ninguna calle si solo lo que estamos haciendo es procurar que les paguen a estos uh, compañeros de Workers Dignity. Yeah, so what we believe we're not doing anything wrong because we're in public area and they blocked off the, the, the public roads and we felt uh, threatened by them and we're not doing anything wrong. We're there to, um, in, um, uh, with the workers uh, demanding for their, uh, the work that they did to get paid. Y yo quisiera preguntarles a ustedes, uh, ¿ustedes cómo se sentirían que no les pagaran su salario? Por ejemplo, nosotros como trabajadores nos sentimos muy mal puesto que trabajamos por un salario y la verdad es que no nos lo pagan. ¿Qué podemos hacer ante ello? Yeah. And my question to you all is, how would you all feel if you didn't get paid for the work that you've done? Um, Can I pick up? Uh, y no nos pagan nuestro trabajo y quisiera saber cómo podemos hacer. And para they don't pay, pay us for our work and uh, we would like to know what we can do to get our uh, salaries back, to get our wages back. Uh, por ejemplo, si alguien va a alguna tienda y agarra algún objeto, una herramienta o algo, hmm. le llaman a la policía para que atiendan a, a ese robo. Hmm. ¿Por qué si esto... También es un robo no pagarle el salario a un trabajador. ¿Por qué no se le llama a la policía o hay algún delito que perseguir? If someone uh, steals something, an item from a store, they call the police and then there's consequences. But for, in this case, when workers uh, do the work and they don't get paid, there's no consequences against their, against their bosses. Yeah. Yo quisiera preguntarle si pudiera haber alguna ley que no permitiera que hubiera eh, robo de salario o oh, que nos permitieran demoler lo que no nos pagan. Yeah. I was uh, wondering if there could be possibly some type of bill here that could be passed that would uh, prevent wage theft here or at least let us demolish the work that we did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hmm. Are there any communications from Williamson County Commission? I did notice uh, Commissioner Lawrence here tonight. We welcome his presence. If he's still here, uh, we'll go to the approval of the minutes from November 28th. Are you speaking? He's speaking to an item. No, he's. Uh, if you, no, no, we want you to speak on the item. Is that item, which one is it? Okay, we'll put you on the list then at that time. Um, we're now consider approval of the minutes from the work session of November 28th and Board Mayor Alderman meeting. I would consider a motion. Mm -hmm. So we'll move second. Uh, appropriate motion by the vice mayor and seconded by Alderman Barnhill. Any discussion, corrections? Seeing none, ready to vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. Uh, we'll now go to uh, recognitions and uh, we are going to move the proclamation for freedom in intermediate school choir to January the 9th because of unavailability of some of the members. Uh, and we'll now go to some miscellaneous reports. And I know we have several and 
keep looking that way because I'm, things I'm have changed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have a couple. Yeah. First, I want to have uh, our city re uh, city attorney report on some uh, court activity in the last few days related to uh, our ethics commission uh, and a former <laughs> alderman. I'd like to give, have her give you a report that will probably lead into some action by the board in January. So, Shauna. Good evening. Can you guys hear me? Is that okay? That this mic is very yeah. quiet. Pull it closer to you. Um, it's really close. <laughs> no, it's, not. it's really close. No. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, maybe I'll switch. Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Better. Great. Uh, as you know, um, Alderman, previous Alderman Gabrielle Hansen had filed two lawsuits. Um, uh, regarding the Ethics Commission, she filed a writ of cert, and that was the first lawsuit she filed, and that was regarding the findings of the Ethics Commission themselves, and she asked that the court reverse those findings. The hearing was set for November 30th, and as you remember, Gail Ashworth was attorney for the Ethics Commission, <coughs> and she filed a brief in the court, as did uh, Ms. Hansen's attorney. Um, and then simultaneous to that, we had a lawsuit filed by Ms. Hansen against the Ethics Commission and the board members individually, um, in naming the individual board members. And in that case, if you remember, she was asking that the court declare that any actions that she make in the future not really be the purview of the Ethics Commission. The judge uh, in that case issued an order denying that lawsuit, um, and then she also, the judge also ordered the court to, or her to pay the city court costs and um, discretionary costs. And that's about two, almost $2,000. Days before the hearing on the writ, um, Gabrielle Hansen filed a motion to dismiss and vacate as moot both of those cases. Um, as to the writ, the court said um, that the motion can, what was going to be taken as a motion to dismiss, and he dismissed the case. What, what Gabrielle also asked for in that, in that motion to dismiss was to say that the Ethics Commission ruling was also moot and vacate that ruling. The court denied, to, denied doing that, only dismissing the case itself. As to the other case, the court denied the motion to dismiss, saying that when he made the order, he, he issued the order, she was still a sitting alderman, and the case was not moot when he issued the order. So what that means is the Ethics Commission ruling, as made by them, stands. Mm -hmm. The normal process for you would be to put that item on an agenda and have you act. Well, we can't do that now because we know that um, non- officials are not allowed to be censured by this board. But you do have to take some sort of action because they do have a recommendation. So what we're going to ask you to do is just acknowledge the um, ethics commission ruling. Um, it has to come up here. I mean, their their recommendation was to bring it to you. It is, it is moot in the sense that we can't do anything about it. Um, but we do want to put it on and acknowledge it. And I think that's kind of important because the, the whole purpose of that that process was complaints followed by citizens, and this was their only way and method to be heard. So just to add to that, we, we would plan to bring something to you on January 9th to both acknowledge that report, but affirm the actions of the Eth Ethics yeah. Commission. They did their job, and uh, I think it's a, an important step for you to acknowledge that, move that forward. That is the path through which citizens express a concern about the actions of their elected leaders. There's no other path. So we want to affirm that that was followed, that was done properly. Due to the timing of the legal process that this individual availed themselves of, it could not ha happen in the time they were in office. That is what it is. But that process still stands. That committee commission still did their job. And so we want to provide you the opportunity to affirm that. And uh, that will be on January 9th. We got this finding just at the end of last week did not have time to place it on this agenda or would be on this agenda. But we've got to have proper notice for any actions that you take. And uh, that first opportunity will be January 9th. Is there any action that's required tonight to have that added to nope. the agenda? No. Excellent. We will just add it just like a normal item. So you are fine on that, on that stand. Thank you. Any other questions on that? I do have two more things I want to cover. So, Please continue. All right. All right. Well, on a lighter note, 
I want to thank our city team. Uh, they have delivered the holiday joy the last <laughs> few weeks when you look at it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> We had an incredible tree lighting, record attendance. Yeah. Uh, I, I, we're still trying to figure out exactly how many people were here, but I would say at least 15,000 enjoyed oh, okay. the opportunity yeah. to light that tree okay. and celebrate uh, bringing in the, the holiday season together. Uh, and, and that was a beautiful thing. Christmas parade on that Saturday. And even though weather was a little difficult this past okay. weekend, but Dickens of, of a Christmas happened uh, again, I think for the nearly 40th time uh, in its history. And so our city team played a critical, critical role in helping that happen and want to publicly thank them. Uh, I do want to do another acknowledgement. We have a beginning and an end happening tonight, and I want to acknowledge it, and I'll try to hold it together. <laughs> <coughs> Hannah. <laughs> she likes to be back there, but this is her last meeting. Hannah Lampala, who's the executive assistant for myself and for the mayor, will be leaving us. She is moving away. She's pursuing uh, additional education. She's going to pursue mechanical engineering. She's heading up to northern Michigan in the middle of winter. Oh. We're not sure why, <laughs> but we know we know why because Hannah has uh, has some great dreams and, and, and future visions that she wants to achieve. But she has been a great member of our team. It's only been two years, but she's had a uh, great impact. Mm -hmm. Her uh, her sweet spirit, her dedication. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we just appreciate that very, very much. Mm -hmm. So we wish you the very best as you move forward. And, uh, you know, don't be a stranger. We, we love you and we want to see you uh, flourish in this next chapter of life. So thank you for everything you've done for us, for me especially, for the mayor, and for our whole team. Uh, and then we get to welcome our new executive assistant right next to Hannah back there in the, uh, in the back row, uh, Kaylin Helton. Kaylin joins us, just started this week. She's shadowing Hannah to learn this past week to uh, learn more elements of the job and we'll uh, will do a great job. She comes from a private sector experience as an executive assistant, uh, also served in her past as a flight attendant, and played volleyball at the University of Tennessee. So she has a, a great and interesting background and will be a welcome welcome addition. I knew the Vols would like that. I had to put that one out there. Uh, and so we're just, uh, we will miss Hannah greatly, but we know we've also filled that role with a talented, capable, dedicated person yeah. too. So uh, we wish them both the very, very best in these next chapters. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Stuckey, you stole my thunder. <laughs> uh, I've depended greatly on Hannah for the last two years and uh, have uh, enjoyed the time that I've been able to work with her and uh, just wish her the best of luck. And thank you, Hannah, for all you've done to keep my schedule straight and keep me straight. <laughs> Both sometimes difficult, so thank you. So how about the consent agenda? Something to be really fun now. <laughs> and all items on the consent agenda are deemed to be non-controversial and routine in nature, but the governing body that will be approved is recommended by committee or staff by one motion. Tonight we're considering items number 24 to 25. That's the shortest consent agenda I've ever seen. Uh, but is there a motion? Thank you, Alderman Blanton. Is there a second? second? Seconded by Alderman Potts. Any discussion? Ready to vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. We'll now go to item number four. This is a public hearing consideration of resolution 2023-47, resolution approving a development plan for the hard bargain two PUD subdivision for the property located south of Mount Hope Street and north of Glass Street located at 958 Glass Street. Joey? Thank you. Uh, this uh, <coughs> development plan proposes two new single family residential lots. Uh, Envision Franklin places this property in the compact residential design concept. Uh, the proposed development plan is consistent with recommendations of the uh, compact residential design concept. Um, a develop, development plan is required due to lot two uh, not being able to meet the minimum front line, lot line requirements uh, for the R6 district. <coughs> um, the applicant uh, can request reduction in the amount of frontage on a road for the front uh, lot line through a PUD. And the other standards proposed for this development are in keeping with the established surrounding neighborhood. 
Uh, so staff recommends approval of resolution 2023-47 with conditions. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, does anyone want to speak to this body publicly during the public hearing? I do see uh, the executive director uh, here, but seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion. Approved. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Second, Second. By Alderman Potts. Any discussion? Mr. Written? Mayor, uh, I, I do have uh, something I would like to read. Sure, uh, go ahead. Alderman Potts. Thank you. So for those that have joined us in person or are watching from home, here are a few things to remember about, the, uh, about hard bargain and why, to, why tonight's vote is so important. Hmm. Hard bargain's mission is to continue to preserve the historic hard bargain neighborhood that was developed 130 years ago. Hard Bargain works with current residents of the neighborhood to restore, rebuild, and maintain the homes within the community. This PUD that we are voting on tonight will bring two single-family homes back to the Hard Bargain neighborhood. Both of these homes will be deed-restricted and sold for $275,000, this well below the market rate, which is currently $950,000 in Franklin. These hard bargain homes will allow low to moderate income families to access turnkey equity overnight. And these homes are designed by the same architect that designed the award-winning bungalow court that was featured in Southern Living Magazine. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all the public and private partners, the City of Franklin team members, Kathleen, Sasita, the Housing Development Coordinator, and members of the Housing Commission that have been involved in this journey to get us to tonight. In addition, I'd like to share that at last night's Housing Commission's meeting, Tom Levowitz was elected to serve as a Housing Commissioner Chair and Kim Randall as Vice Chair. And we're excited for this leadership and this opportunity as we move forward and explore new funding resources for both hard bargain and future opportunities. Thank you. Any other comments? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. Item 5 is Ordinance 2023-23 to rezone 0.29 acres from residential R6 district to Plan PD 6.06 district on 0.29 acres from property located 958 Glass Street, Hard Bargain PUD subdivision. Is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Thank you, Alderman Berger, for the second. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Caesar? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Alderman Berger? Yes. Vice Mayor Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Alderman Baggett? Yes. Passes unanimously. Item number six, this is a public hearing consideration resolution 2023-71, initiating the annexation process and draft plan of services for the annexation of 32.36 acres located north of Murfreesboro Road, west of John Williams Road, located at 4038 and 4040 Clovercroft <clears throat> Road. Good evening. Chelsea? Thank you. This property, um, the property is being considered around mm -hmm. the north side of Clovercroft Road and west of John Williams Road. The properties are not contiguous to city limits, but they are well within the city's urban growth boundary and are proximate to other city neighborhoods. The property is within the mixed residential design concept as defined by the Envision Franklin Land Use Plan. It is the intention of the applicant to develop single family residential homes using the land at the 4038 Clovercroft Road property as well as a portion of the land at 4040 Clovercroft. It is the intention of the remainder of 44 Clovercroft property to remain a church. <laughs> 44 Clovercroft Road was granted sewer availability for 13 single family unit equivalents in 2020 contingent on a signed and recorded annexation agreement. A draft plan of service is included as an attachment. The city's annexation study did not assign a priority to these properties when it was being conducted, but it is within the Watson Branch drainage basin, which consists property of predominantly city properties. The properties lie within the Millcroft and Utility District and sanitary sewer will need to be extended across Clovercroft. These properties include future roadways listed on the major thoroughfare plan and annexing these properties would continue to complete an area of UGB that is surrounded by existing city limits. Staff recommends that the Board of Mayor and Aldermen approve resolution 2023-71. Thank you. Thank you. This is the public hearing. Uh, is the applicant here? Yeah. Uh, 
Would you like to speak prior to the public hearing? Would you like to speak after the? Okay, that'd be fine. Uh, two minutes each, and I'd ask you to line up, please, at the podium. Uh, Barb Kramer, James Waddy, David McCulloch, and John Williams, and then I'll read off the next group after they finish. Commissioner Lawrence, would you like to speak before or after? Okay. You just come on up whenever you're ready. Hi, I'm Barb Kramer. I live at 1035. I've lived there a while. I can't remember. I'm a little nervous. 1035 John Williams Road. And um, I'm going to state a few reasons why we are against that. First, I want to remind you all I sent an email out to you guys yesterday. If nobody has a copy of it, then we'll be. I have some extras if you need it. But that's basically information. I'm not going to go over that. I just wanted you all to have it in advance of tonight. Um, comments that I have to make is um, this is the annexation initiation situation and according to the rules you all have, BOMA can determine whether they would like to consider annexing this area. Um, and should they determine it's in the best interest of the city to consider annexing, then they can. My question is how does the city decide if annexation is in the best interest of the city and do they consider the nearby impact on nearby residents in that who are in the county, who don't have a representative with the city? Um, second point is um, the Envision Franklin has several major items it talks about. Um, and it says that um, development plans, which are planned for this, it's planned to be a PUD, um, that the um, plans to be the development plans are meant to be used only in times when the goals of Envision Franklin cannot be met under zoning district. Well, that's the area, if it was zoned city, would be one acre per. So why does it have to be a PUD? Um, and how can you say that that's meeting the goal of, of Envision Franklin? In addition to that, um, Envision Franklin goals state that the intent is to preserve the past, talks about saving historic areas and protecting the natural beauty along its edges and preserving, preserving scenic corridors and viewsheds. How does this requested annexation do that? It seems like it affects, negatively affects that. Go ahead and be finishing up, please. Here. Oh, um, gosh. Um, it's... One of the things was spot zoning. We talked about, I discussed that with the mayor and <clears throat> Chelsea mentioned there, there is city maybe surrounding it, but this particular area is not surrounded by city. It's all surrounded by county property. And it goes all the way from that property all the way to Highway 96 and a little beyond. So we question whether that is in fact my final thing. Let me just say that. Um, yes, um, so Thank please you. consider this initi initiation request and consider the homes that are still there and the people that are still there. We understand he has a right to do what he wants with yes, his property. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. We ask you to deny Thank the you, initiation. Thank you. If you didn't already know, I'm John Williams from John Williams Road. And Bev, I just want to thank you for letting me know how this whole situation, uh, how we can address each other because of the snide comments you made at the, at the uh, previous meeting I was at, where you addressed it as this area would be serviced by Franklin Special School District, so all the traffic would be turning and going towards 96. Well, that was a direct slap in the face to the black family that has been there ancestral as long as I have. And that just meant that their lives didn't matter. Their lives do matter. Uh, they're like family to me, just like uh, my own family. And that property is at 17 acres is, an, is uh, home to a, I hate to call it home, a cemetery that uh, has World War I veteran, a uh, Vietnam veteran by the name of Carruthers. That name ought to mean something because of the placard that's on the bridge. This property is abutted with um, Breckenridge. Breckenridge has not shown them any respect any more than Bev's neighbors and the HOA board of McKay's Mill and Haddon Hall. They're constantly tearing down my fences, throwing their trash over, uh, letting their dogs on my cows. The same situation has been with, with their property. 
I've gone to door to door down 96. From Oxford Glen to 96 is the highest density of number of houses that their driveways are directly connected to Clovercroft. You have to make split second decisions to get out of your driveway. It is a death trap. The 500 homes that you have uh, approved for tap root will be following down that road. When we talk to that developer that's doing tap root, they already said they weren't building the marketplace until they had 200 homes filled. That means that's much more traffic coming down. And you've got Laguna and the others that are gonna be doing the same. And Franklin Special School District has buses and buses come up my road and they'll be turning out. A uh, turn lane will do nothing, absolutely nothing. This is a road. If you'll finish up please, Mr. Williams. That road was a horse and buggy road that was just paved. It was never intended for people with Maseratis to do 80 miles an hour on. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, so my name is uh, James Waddy. I am a direct uh, descendant of the W.J. Boyd property that Mr. Williams was just mentioning. It is 17 acres. Um, it has been in my family since 1885. I'll say that again, 1885. Um, my family has maintained that property. Um, I am here to speak on behalf of these wonderful ladies right here, specifically my mother. Her and her six siblings are uh, the current direct heirs and descendants of owning uh, the 17 acres. And they brought me here to tell you we are strongly opposed to any annexation. It does nothing for us, as Mr. Williams has uh, just spoken to. We have years of uh, neighbors from the Breaking Ridge side, along with other sides that, uh, since the property, I guess, doesn't look like some of the million dollar neighborhoods, the five, $600,000 homes beside it, they seem they can uh, come over, uh, build gazebos, <coughs> cut down fences, hunt, leave uh, slaughtered deers on the property. And my aunts call me to come clean it up. You know, I have a daughter, I have a farm in uh, West Thompson Station, Burr, whatever, if you're familiar. I could be spending time, you know, building uh, my family, building my le legacy. And instead I have to come deal with problems because people don't respect uh, the property, respect people who humbly live their lives you know, and keep things humble. Um, again, we do not want the annexation. Um, my aunts, again, driving in and out of their driveway have been hit, almost hit numerous times up and down Clover Croft Road. More traffic to it does nothing but increase those chances. So I just wanna say again, we strongly oppose the annexation and I will be here speaking to it, to you all, and anybody else I need to talk to, to let them know that we strongly oppose it. Thank you, sir. My name's David McCulloch. <clears throat> I live just uh, a short ways up from this property and I'm opposed to the annexation. And the reasons, have to do with the enormous amount of development that's already taking place in that area. The traffic has increased enormously. There are accidents all up and down that road. Every day and every night, we hear sirens of emergency vehicles heading somewhere to rescue somebody that's hit another car or another animal and damaged themselves and their lives. It's very distressing. <clears throat> It's also distressing to know that we have started to feel like you're developing us out of the quality of life that we came here to enjoy. And it's not reflective of the Tennessee values that we bought when we moved here. We want people to enjoy their lives here. It's a wonderful place to live, but the development just is rampant in that it's making things so congested. It doesn't feel like it is the wonderful community that, that we've grown to love. Uh, we're becoming concrete. We don't want people to lose the beauty and the green and the values they came here to enjoy. We hope you will protect the 
heart and the hearth of Franklin by not annexing this property. <clears throat> Thank you. Commissioner Lawrence, welcome. Good evening, Mayor, Alderman, Greg Lawrence, County Commissioner in the 4th District. As always, I want to start by thanking all of you for your service and the very valuable time that you give to our community. And I also want to extend to you the warmest of holiday wishes from the County Commission tonight. I want to just focus on one aspect of this property, and that is the annexation request. I do. It does appear that this is a spot annexation, which may be legal under Tennessee law. Uh, and it, within your purview to annex the property if you want to, but that's not a precedent that we would prefer that you set from the county perspective. And the reason is for the reasons that we've talked about many times in the past, because of the, the pressure that puts on the infrastructure around that property that is not in the city that has to be maintained by the county. Clovercroft Road is a road that we've talked about numerous times. I've been here probably three or four times talking about the road. It's a very substandard road. Uh, that hasn't changed. The, as has been mentioned tonight, there's going to be a lot more traffic on that road when the 500 homes get developed and the 50 more across the street from that within the next few years. And I know we've had discussions about what the county can bring to the table, and our issue is simply money. And we, we, um, we have a lot of infrastructure projects in the unincorporated areas that are in dire need of upgrades that we, we are, are giving priority to because uh, we, we view these projects within the urban growth boundaries of the municipalities as areas where if the cities are going to develop <coughs> within those areas that they should, be, they should be responsible for the infrastructure that needs to be in place to support the development. And we simply don't have the resources to, to, uh, to, to fund any, any significant upgrades to Clovercroft Road. So it's, it's not going to be a priority for us. And so th those are the things that I just wanted to bring to your attention tonight that, that I hope you will consider when you're making your decisions. I understand this is a preliminary vote, but just to put it out there what our position is. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Eric Wolf and then John Clark. <coughs> Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Uh, thank you for what you do for the city. My name is Eric Woolley. Uh, I lived in, I've lived in Franklin now for seven years and uh, am an, on the Board of Elders at Franklin Christian Church, which is the church that owns 4040 Clovercroft. Um, we have appreciated working with the city since we moved in within the last a little more than a year, just had our one year celebration. And on the Board of Elders, Obviously, we, we want to make sure that the church property is, uh, is, is, a, is a place that continues to be a place to glorify God. And uh, we've really appreciated in speaking with Hank uh, and seeing his plans and feel strongly that uh, even if we go ahead with the annexation, uh, as, and I know that you've already as, as was mentioned before with the sewer that we had put in, uh, it's an option for you. Um, we feel strongly that it will be, it will maintain <coughs> its beauty uh, at the top of the hill there. And uh, so I would support, uh, as I said, the annexation. Thank you. Good evening, board. My name is John Clark. I'm a, a member of Franklin Christian Church and uh, on the board of elders there as well. <clears throat> and I was involved seven years ago when we bought this land from uh, John Sonia, and we had an option to buy the land that Hank is looking at today. And it was our desire then, we came before you guys to, to be mm -hmm. part of the city. And uh, as Eric just spoke, that uh, we were able to uh, reach an agreement to, that you guys gave a sewer and, and uh, in return for an option to annex us at, at any time. And, uh, and we, are, we are in favor of Franklin Christian Church of this annexation. Uh, we believe it gives us a great opportunity for uh, further development of our property along with a, a co-development with Hank. And so I would like to, to represent uh, myself and Franklin Christian Church that we are in favor of the annexation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm the applicant, Hank Robeson, with Robeson Property Group. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for their comments. Uh, you know, we're still really early in this project, working with staff, taking feedback, uh, implementing it, and uh, we don't have uh, you know a design yet for the project. We're just looking for um, uh, approval to proceed with our application from you tonight. So. Thanks, sir. Um, I have no other speaker cards for this item. I'm going to declare the public hearing closed and would entertain a motion. Oh, mm, I, go ahead. Go ahead. Motion to approve. Um, I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Appropriate motion by Alderman Baggett, second mm. by Alderman Berger. Uh, go, you want to speak, Alderman Baggett? Um, no. Okay. Alderman Berger? Well, yeah, I want to clear a few things up here. Um, well, thank you for the church to um, coming in to say that you would be willing to annex in. Uh, because there's numerous properties along that area that will come into the city eventually, and it is relatively close to a lot of the city properties and, and land. Um, so at opportune times to be able to annex in, in in the urban growth boundary that is so close to our city, um, I think is a good thing at the time when people are willing to come in. Uh, unfortunately, we can't control our um, state laws that have not done us a good service as far as our control of annexing uh, smartly sometimes for city services and contiguous <coughs> uh, property to the city. Um, I want to speak to some comments that are made by Mr. Williams tonight. Uh, greatly disturbs me that um, said something about snide comments that I made at the last meeting and sir I my comments were never meant to be snide my comments were simply speaking to where someone had asked about where the school system would be what what the school system was in that area and so I wanted to make it perfectly clear the school system was Franklin Special School District not Williamson County because there is a difference if you are coming out of that area the church property there. Um, if you are in Williamson County School Systems, you would definitely be taking a left-hand turn to go down the rest of Clovercroft Drive. If you are in Franklin Special, there would be the opposite direction. You would not be turning left, you would be turning right to go to 96. The buses would be turning to go to that area as well. Do, the, do know that they go up to Haddon Hall pick up a few students sometimes um, sometimes there's no students in that district um, so simply stating when someone had asked me what school district that was in I don't know how that's tied to being a racist comment uh, that's very perplexing to me it has nothing to do with that it has nothing to do I that was like pulled out of thin air I guess but um, the other thing about the fencing and everything else that's going on there, I don't control that HOA. I'm a city alderman. I have no authority over HOAs. I do believe that there was a legal ru ruling by attorneys on the ownership of that fence. So, with that said, I'm disappointed that the county and Greg and I are very good friends and sometimes we have to agree to disagree and I always respect Commissioner Lawrence great respect for for you um, but it's very disappointing that the county is not willing to look at their portion of the road that road cannot be improved unless it's a joint effort so no matter what development happens on that road or what doesn't happen on their road, that road has to be improved. But there are spots in that road, there's some curves in that road, and there's a lack of shoulders in a lot of different places in that road. We've had a meeting, the county and the city sat down together, and we were to look at this as a joint project. 
I'm not going to put a four lane road in there. We're not going to redo the entire road, but there are safety issues on that road that need to be improved. A lot of that is further down east from the entrance of your church. Um, the better part of that road is actually from your church to 96. Um, substandard, yeah, Greg, it is a substandard road in, in many ways, in many areas. Um, but money is not always the issue. To me, safety has got to be an issue as well. And I think the city and the county need to go together. We need to find the money. We need to make our spot improvements. We need to take out a few curves. We need to put on some um, shoulders where it's appropriate, where it's needed. So we protect people from growing off the road. Um, if you don't, the county doesn't have the resources. I mean, who does? We have to find the resources when it's the right thing to do. And we've had, we've had numerous accidents in that road, but it have all been east of there, all, always east of there. So I just want to clear up a few things that might be on people's minds to make sure that we understand um, some of the issues here. Um, development in that area is going to come, and I want to know who's going to control that development. If we annex it in, doesn't mean that we have to develop it. We don't have, we annex it in, it doesn't mean we have to today or tomorrow or next week or next month that we have to allow for the development to happen. We could annex it in, do a plan of services, and then decide if we want development to happen there or not. What is it going to be? Is it going to be seven homes? Will it be 40 homes? Will it be 30 homes? Will it be 20 homes? I think the max you had talked about were like 38. Um, may not may not be that. It could be 20, could be 25. Who knows? Uh, I'd like to know what that property would be situated for. We know the school has owns it now. They've turned around to sell it. And they would like to do that. And I think I would like to know about a plan of services for that area. I'd like to study that area, but we, we can't do that on our own. We're not going to do that without going ahead and annexing it and then doing a plan of services. So I'm a little perplexed with the whole thing. Um, but I think we need, in some ways, to really take a look at our urban growth boundary that's so close. And again, with our hands tied by the state, with the way that they have put, set down the annexation rules and laws, our hands are tied behind our back. We can't go out and say, well, it makes sense to annex in five or six properties and bring them into the city. We can't do that anymore unless someone asks to be annexed in, annexed in. So I just wanted to say these things and clear the air and make sure that we're all um, <coughs> looking at this from a perspective of what are the facts, what, what's happening there, the county, the city, the roads, the church, um, and I think that's about all I need to say. Thank you. Right. <coughs> um, <coughs> not, uh, I've met with uh, the developer uh, this product. I, 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 and I was clear, I didn't mind the single family homes, um, <coughs> but as all of you know, I, I did not support Taproot, and I continue to be extremely concerned with Clovercroft Road. Um, you know, it's kind of a kicker. It's um, county doesn't want to do anything, wants the city to do it. But if we don't develop it, then we don't have the funds to, uh, you know, the development pays for the roads. And so it, it, we do seem to find ourselves in this very circular conversation around a road that's just incredibly unsafe. And we're just putting more and more on it. I'm not opposed to the idea of the annexation. We did provide services to this property. And, and in exchange, the idea was we would annex it in. And perhaps um, there's more property owners down the path that would like to as well. But I will say, I, I, I can't think right now of a plan that I would be excited about approving for this property. Uh, annexing it is one thing, um, but until we fix Clovercroft Road, you're going to have a hard time getting me to approve development up and down Clovercroft at this point. Much similar to how I feel about Taproot. That really hasn't changed because the road hasn't changed. Anybody else? Which is, uh, All in the pots. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I wanted to speak to a couple of things, and I want to thank all those that came out for public comment tonight. Uh, as you probably saw, I was capturing notes working through this. And uh, Mr. Wadi, I want to appreciate you coming to speak on behalf of your family, sir. Uh, and uh, as you referenced this, this property that's adjacent to uh, the properties that we're discussing tonight, it's been in your family since 1885, um, I, I fully respect your strong opposition to the annexation and understands that. Um, I, I am concerned about the preservation of the cemetery that's on your property. And I know that, you know, I've, I've expressed that concern and want to make sure that that property and that area of your property where the cemetery is, um, is protected. Uh, it's preserved. and. Um, that we don't see any damage coming to it in the future. Um, with that said, I, I do have a, a lot of concerns when we're talking about uh, Clovercroft, and um, I'm, I'm concerned about moving forward right now if the county is stating, and, and again, you know, Commissioner Lawrence, not saying that you're speaking for all of the commission, but if the, the county is, if this is not a priority for them, then I think that we may be at the point where we need, we do need to do a study regarding how many accidents are occurring on this road, what the traffic count is on this road, and what the impact is right now. Because this has become an ongoing issue for us as we have, since we have been on this board for two years, I don't think that there's a single road that has come up more often with more concern. So I, I have, I have that concern about moving this forward for annexation. I do respect uh, those that came out and spoke, uh, Mr. Clark, Mr. Uh, Robertson, uh, regarding, uh, and Mr. Uh, Willie, excuse me, um, uh, for Franklin Christian Church, and, uh, and do recognize that the growth and the opportunity for annexation in the near future, but um, uh, the comments tonight from the county uh, from Commissioner uh, Lawrence, you know, it raises a red flag for me right now. Um, I, I'm very hesitant if the funding is not going to be there. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Alderman Baggett. And I don't know what the county road budget is, but when we were looking at the other one, a uh, tap rate, it was um, like 12 or $14 million. Yep. And so I don't, I mean, is that about right? And so, yeah, Clovercroft is probably a $40 million road. But as I just, and I appreciated uh, the comments of the Alderman, but if you go down this road, you'll notice the, the areas where there are three lanes, if you look up on the map, is where it's in the city. The safest parts of this road are in the city limits. We're actually, albeit it's not all at once, but we're we're actually getting to a safer road because if, if the county's not going to come up and, and, and join in and pay on, on this, which it doesn't sound like they are, and that's fine, I, I get it. How is this going, the city's not just going to improve a road in the county for fun. We've got all these projects. We've got like, I'm, we're not just going to go. And so the areas in which, so there's got to be a joint solution. I mean, so one, the county, the city throwing up our hands and saying, it's not going to happen. Just stop doing something. I think is, is really a non-starter for me when the road is safest in the city limits on this, on this, on the, on the Clovercroft. And maybe that's the way it gets improved. Maybe, I mean, improved to, to get to where the price is right for a county to participate. And I do think they want to, I really do. I think that's a desire. I understand the financial you know, constraints that are on the county that in the city has um, similar ones, but in different ways. So the road, I get it, but I guess you're just gonna not do anything out here. And that's fine too, I guess, but it's just interesting to me that the safest parts of Clover Cough Road are in the are in the city limits because there has been smart development, and I would object. Uh, there, the turn lane will help the safety of that intersection. It will, no doubt. And quite frankly, if you bring a development plan, 
you know, our staff needs to really, I mean, <laughs> that's, I would expect that that section for sure in front of this parcel would need to be improved. Um, if that's the way we're going to do this. If the county's not going to step up, then you one chunk at a time. And that's going to be part of the development requirements, if that can happen. Um, maybe that's how this has to happen. Um, I, I don't like throwing in the towel and saying we got a problem we can't solve, and so we're just going to do nothing. Um, I don't like a dangerous road. But last time Paul ran the numbers, it was at or below the state accident level. At. at. So we've got to do something so until the county steps up with us and we get a, get a good plan. It doesn't really sound like there is one. Um, anyway, those are my comments about the road. I, I do think that it's um, services are there. They're coming by. Um, sewers there. This is not going to remain a rural. This is not one of the areas that was to remain rural forever in, the, in our in our envision Franklin. Um, so I would I would support it, the annexation. Now there's a whole other step that, <laughs> of development plan that has there are a lot of specifics to go, but I, I would allow that to move forward tonight, um, just based off of that. It, and you could bring something if you if you're trying to pack ten pounds of sand in a six pound bag here, you know you're wasting your time. Um, but I would, I would support the annexation. Anybody else? Initiation. Of the Initiation of the process. I apologize. Um, we do have the traffic study, by the way, and the accident reports. We presented that when we met with the county. Mm -hmm. um, we've done that study, um, presented it at that meeting. Uh, Clovercroft um, will never be a $40 million road because it will probably n never be in the next 25 to 35 years ever a four lane road. Now, after that time, I don't know about that, and then it will be <laughs> five times that much. But um, the plans are not to make it a four-lane road. The plans were in that meeting, that intent in that meeting, the intent of that meeting was to improve overall the safety of that road, putting on some shoulders, taking out a few curves, and you're right, safest part of that road is in the city. We've improved some things. Uh, I will say, though, with one exception, between the church property and 96, you've got a pretty safe road there. It's it's pretty flat. The shoulders, it, it doesn't really drop off. Um, so just want to clarify the, the road thing. Um, I would like to support, and I will uh, vote to support, just as Alderman Baggett said, the annexation, um, because I think the church needs to come into the an to the city now, and I think that bringing all that property in would be a good idea. And I'm totally with uh, Alderman uh, that it it's it really does need. Uh, a lot of work and, and we need to see a plan of services. Uh, Alderman Baggett said, you know, what, what will you bring us? Well, we don't know that. But we do need a plan of services. I'm not against the annexation of that area, but I'm not saying I'm for any of the development there. I have to see what the plans are and I have to see what it would even allow But for the annexation. Alderman Caesar. Just for a point of clarification, Mayor, we are not voting on or against annexation tonight. We're voting on or against the initiation of a process that could lead us to annexation. Is correct. that correct? Consider it. Eventually. Okay. You've got a plan of services that allows you to see Alderman that. Peters. Let me yes. ask you, but, but to be annexed, it has to go through the a vote, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. By, this by just the, uh, initiate the, the plan of services for the property I mean, and then later says, annexed. Excuse me, I mean to be annexed though into the city, the do the homeowner I mean do the property owners have to vote on it at an election? No, because they're requesting the it. property owner has requested it. Yeah. They can request it directly. If it's multiple property owners or areas yes. that are outside of the urban growth boundary, they use the referendum mm. uh, method. But in this case it's a direct it's request from a property owner that is in your urban growth boundary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other comments or right. questions? Right. Ready to vote? Uh, Mr. Mayor, just 
point of clarification uh, or point of information. As we uh, vote to initiate the annexation process, mm -hmm. share with everybody, what is the time frame for that? If we move forward tonight, what would that look like Planet and what service. would it entail? Well, uh, staff has to do additional work and, and the, the applicant's going to do some work as well to talk about how this would be served, what those obligations look like in terms of roadway improvements, water and sewer uh, capabilities, how it would how it would develop. And so staff produces a draft plan of services that basically describes if you brought it into the city, how would that work and how would we deliver city services to this site? Uh, that is a factor or something you use in making the decision whether to approve the requested annexation. Um, I don't know if there's an exact time frame. What would you all, I want to be fair. <laughs> well, I mean, it's really, it's really up to the developer about how quickly they want to move from <coughs> step one to step two. If they need to do some more research about what they want to bring forward, there's really no timeline as to when they need to, when they want to submit the application for annexation. So I can't tell you how quickly they'll come back. Once they start the annexation process though, it's typically that two month process for staff to review it, create these documents for you to vote on, and it would go to planning commission first, and then it would come before you in the typical the resolution ordinance manners of the, mm -hmm. the readings. An applicant can also request a zoning, like PD or something else. If they don't request a zoning, they'll be given a state residential or ag. And a state residential is one per acre. A state residential is two acres. Two. 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 One per two. Two, two acres. acres per lot. lot. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Big, big lots. Two acre right. lots. <laughs> so it could be that. Yeah. And with that could process, be. there's a public hearing at Planning yeah. Commission when they review and make their recommendation. Mm -hmm. Correct. And then you also have three readings and a public hearing mm -hmm. associated mm -hmm. with any action you yeah. take relative to annexation. Yeah. 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 So this is the yeah. start of a much longer process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Correct. The, the, you were just deciding, is it worth doing that additional work on staff's end as well as uh, on the, the applicant's side? So, so getting the plan of services would bring us and the applicant both uh, information they would need to proceed. And then they decide and you, you bring to us whether, well, state residential would be one or two, two, two acres. We'll bring so, you at least three items and they'll be on the same agendas. We'll bring you the plan of service to yeah. be voted on. You yeah. have a draft plan of service yeah. in your agendas tonight. That's sort of our first take at it based on the high level land uses that they want. We'll finalize that. That's the first step of if you annex, this is how the property is served. Then you would vote on an annexation to bring it into the city or not. Then you would vote on a zoning. If the applicant requests the zoning, <coughs> that's what we would bring you forward. Mm -hmm. And it would be yours to determine whether you approve the zoning or not. And if the zoning is PD, then the last vote would be for the development plan associated with right. that PD. Got it. Thanks, Amy. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, if, if I can ask one other. Uh, I, I am assuming that the church is still planning to own, I would, I would assume, the larger property, the 25 acres. Is that right? Thank you. The church will be maintained on 4040. They are going to sell a portion of their property okay. to um, the developer if this moves forward to to develop into single family. <coughs> mm -hmm. But it but it but the church owns the larger property right now. Correct. Correct. The big the big one. Correct. Thank you. Ready to vote? Yep. Alderman Barnhill. No. Alderman Blanton. No. Alderman Caesar. No. Alderman Peterson. No. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. No. Alderman Potts. No. And Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes. I mean, the motion fails six to two. 
We'll now move to item number seven. This is a public hearing consideration of resolution 2023-72, a resolution initiating the annexation process draft plan of services for annexation of 35.95 acres located south of Southbury's Chapel Road and east of Echo Lane located at 2247 Southbury's Chapel Road. Joey? Thank you. Uh, this is a similar request and that is, is an annex annexation initiation, not specifically just the annexation. Uh, the property being considered is located south uh, of Barry's Chapel. If, just to point out from our uh, work session, just uh, this property is a few parcels down from the intersection of Franklin Road and South Barry's Chapel. You can't really see Franklin Road on the map, so I just wanted to point that out just for geographic location. Um, it is contiguous to the city limits and it is within our city's urban growth boundary. The parcel is within the large lot residential design concept as defined by Envision Franklin, which state that large lot reflects the established character of existing neighborhoods and often provides a transition between city and county subdivisions. New development should have a minimum lot size of one acre or more to fit contextually with surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, new neighborhoods should be designed around natural features. Uh, the plan of services, uh, draft plan of services, is attached for your review. Uh, the plan of services outlines how the city will serve the properties requesting annexation and any additional infrastructure that would be required for new development. Uh, the property lies within the uh, Spencer Creek Basin um, and is identified as a long-term annexation capability area due to the limited, limited developable area remaining. Um, the draft plan of services details no major concerns in providing infrastructure and services to the property. Um, however, connectivity of the parcels to the southeast of the annexation request area is vitally important to the future development of property within the city's UGB. Uh, so staff recommends approval of resolution 2023-72. Happy to answer any questions. And this is a public hearing. Uh, I do have one speaker card, but uh, the speaker made the comment that only if needed, so I don't know what that means, but uh, uh, so uh, I don't see this, the uh, applicant, I mean, uh, Mr. Gardner coming forward. So we will close the public mm -hmm. hearing and ask for a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you, Alderman Caesar, for the second. Any discussion? Sure. Let's talk about the road on this one. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, I want to know. <laughs> Not nearly well, as bad. <laughs> it's bad. Not yeah. nearly as bad. Oh. Not nearly as bad, but well, well it's a terrible it road. But it's, where you're it's right a terrible right. road, but it's there's not as much traffic on it. That's actually. exactly right. correct. Yeah. Right. It's okay. a one acre right. lot. Right. <coughs> the ditch okay. is not there. There's quite a bit of difference between mm -hmm. this Aldenburger and what we just got through yeah. turning I'm down. Just saying. So <laughs> yeah. And it's not on Clovercroft. It's not on a place where there's a great deal of traffic and you say to yourself that it's a great dangerous road. So therefore, we can look at this project right here. Total, I look at it totally different from the one mm -hmm. I just turned down. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Okay. Sure. Any other questions Dad or asked comments? The question. yes. Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. And Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. Item eight is revisions to the Creekside Property Acquisition regarding City of Franklin Contract 2023-0297. Memorandum of Understanding between the City of Franklin, Franklin Preservation Partners, LLC, and the First United Methodist <coughs> Church of Franklin, Inc. Uh, is there a motion? Move to approve. Second. Appropriate motion. Second by Alderman Potts. Any discussion? Can, can I just... Real quick, as you make this motion, or as you move into this, uh, you still have a draft update of the memorandum of understanding. So I would like you to give authority to myself, city administrator and the city attorney to finalize it substantially in this form. There may be some adjustments that are necessary as we work with the church, especially because they're still going through their process mm -hmm. and uh, work with uh, the preservation partners group as well as the other other, other partners in this. Um, I, I think we are, are largely there, but there may be some tweaks. So if that is made with that general authority that it's substantially in this form, just why we're bringing this one back to you now, because some changes came our way, uh, that, that, that that would be part of the, of the motion. I do want to hit on two points that are a little different than what we talked about two weeks ago, just to be clear. The phase one purchase would stand alone. 
So I think we got that direction in our discussion two weeks ago, but this is that's the way this is written. That's uh, the properties that are located on the east side. Um, I think it was five and six on the map if we had the map up, but that's five or six, five and six there. Uh, it also considered track two by the language in the and the um, and the agreement. So that happens regardless of what the church decides to do on the land swap in phase two. We are also adding a little different structure to the payment. Uh, there's approximately just under $2.2 million remaining for the purchase of those properties on the east side. And we'd like to split that into two pieces, a million dollars before the end of December. And then the balance, approximately 1.19 million would be paid at closing. And that closing cannot happen until we've platted out the home property, homestead property that will be sold separately, privately uh, by preservation partners. And then, of course, as we talked about two weeks ago, phase two would involve the city purchasing the 13, approximately 13 acres located at the um, southwest corner. Uh, that, that would then be swapped by the city with First uh, Franklin First United Methodist for approximately 33 acres called the racetrack property. Um, and that would take place between now and the end of March. So church has to go through their their process for decision making as a congregation. We respect that, but um, those are the key elements. And again, the city's acquiring around 75, 76 acres of park land, open space land, should this all come to fruition for about for $7 million. So that's about $92,000 an acre for uh, additional open space to add to, to Harlansdale and then along the Franklin Road corridor. I'd ask the vice mayor if he would modify his motion to accommodate Mr. Stuckey and, and our city attorney to uh, be able to uh, work on some of the tweaking of the agreement, as he said. And would that second still be intact if that if mm -hmm. vice mayor agreed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Passes yes. unanimously. Oh. <laughs> Did I go too fast? That's all right. He I, got, he got did it. Did you in. know what I was going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you? that it was a yes. <laughs> you, <just suck> yes. <laughs> you have to be like Let me that ask quick. you again. Oh, How do you vote, Mr. Baggett? <laughs> well, I vote yes. <laughs> you have now made it a unanimous vote. <laughs> Two yeses. You have to be quick with him. What are you talking about? Item I'll 9 is uh, Ordinance 2023-40 to amend the budget of the City of Franklin for FY 2023-24 established public hearing on January the 9th, 2024. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. And uh, thank you, Alderman Peterson. Second by Alderman Berger. Any discussion? Ready to vote? We'll start with you, Alderman Baggett. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Alderman uh, Potts. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Passes unanimously. And item 10 is Resolution 2023-78. Resolution of the Board of Mayor and Alderman for the City of Franklin adopting budget goals for FY 24-25. Motion to approve. Thank you, Second. Alderman Baggett. Seconded by Alderman Potts. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman <coughs> Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Thank you. Passes unanimously. We'll now go to item number 11, which is the consideration of the TDEC Grant City of Franklin Contract 2023-0399 for the preservation plan at Toussaint La Overture Cemetery located at 820 Del Rio Pike. Is there so a motion? Moved. Second. Second. Oh. You slipped that motion in? I did. Oh, thank you, Alderman Blanton. And who did the second? Alderman Take Peterson. your pick. Ann or Matt? I, I, I seconded you, but uh, Absolutely. I see it. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> your, your comments were Thank very you for compelling. <laughs> and we appreciate that, Emmy. Are uh, you ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. And Alderman Bass. Yes. Passes unanimously. We'll now go to item number 12, which is uh, consideration of certificate of compliance for wine and grocery store from Mapco Express 
uh, doing business as um, map code 3303 located at 501 Liberty Pike. Um, so is there a motion? Move to approve. Thank Second. You. Second for Alderman Berger. I have a question. I, a qu I bet we have the same question. Same question. We should have asked it earlier. But All the map codes have been purchased by Circle K, and yeah. I thought we just I thought we had this changed from them to Circle K. I thought so, too. Four weeks we, ago. Is oh, this not a Circle K? So they have not, they're not changing all the names to Circle K. They're keeping map co as some. Okay. So they, they're, they did, they're doing different things with different stores, so you may see a couple different variations coming there through. You go. I just didn't want us to have to redo paperwork yeah. if we no, didn't say something. No, ma'am. This Thanks. is correct. Yeah. Th th thank you. I think they all did change nope, to Circle so K. So we've got a motion and a second. So you ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Burger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. Item number 13 is resolution 2023-77 resolution authorizing establishment of a special assessment district for sanitary improvements for Hamlet Drive and also establish a public hearing on January the 9th. Motion to approve. Second. Seconded by the vice mayor. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Yes. Alderman Barnhill. <laughs> that was a premature yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to interpret what that really means. That is the typical thing. <laughs> How about a, uh, yes? You vote yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peters. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. Item number um, 14 is resolution 2023-79, amending the effective date <sighs> yes, of implementation sir. of the water and sanitary sewer impact fees established in ordinance 2022-40. Hmm. Is there a motion? Mine says the amending is crossed Yeah, out. it is changed from amending to staying because okay. you're modifying the effective date, oh. but it's done through resolution. So, mm -hmm. to so I will approve, make a motion to stay the effective date of implementation. And you need to provide us with a date within there too. Um, do we have a recommended date? Currently January 1, 2024. We don't meet till the 9th, but does that matter? Is it... What is it? What the question date? I think is whether we want to give an applicant longer time under, more fees under the old agreement versus changing the date of implementation of the water and sewer impact fees or it could be january right so as it as it reads now starting january, january 1 the new impact fees go into place oh. and so the we've had at least one developer ask <laughs> for additional yeah. time um, and so, and that was brought by um, Alderman Berger. There's two. Be two applicants. So, um, There's two applicants. Staff, <coughs> staff uh, it doesn't have a recommendation really either way, but you don't really, you can't really move it to the next meeting. You need to think about Understood. like, how far out. <clears throat> could we do it to the so, end of January? So, are you saying that January 3rd? we could amend the day to say, January. you know, June the 1st or? Is that what you're saying? Oh, Lord. You can pick a date. January Or you 30th. can stay with the date you have. How about, let's say, February 1, 2024? Second, then. Did you get a second to that? No, I'll second that. Not yet. I'll second it. I'll second it. Open for discussion. I, I would like to know, <coughs> excuse me, uh, what if we're not interested in extending the date? Does it go? Is it does 30 vote days? No. You vote no, vote no, sounds and then just vote no. anybody that yeah. votes no stays January 1. That sounds good. 30 days. All right, may I speak? Uh, Alderman Burke, so, I'm asking. Re uh, the reason I supported Randy's is um, there's a couple people involved in this, whether they need it or not. And you know, I'm thinking to myself, at the end of January, it's fine, still keeps it in January, but February 1st is one day over that, so I'm good with that. And it doesn't really rock the boat, so I will support that. I, I believe that, if I remember correctly, that city administrator said said something to the effect that this was a dangerous precedent that we were starting, and that if we do one 
we have no basis for not doing the next one, in my interpretation, and we have no basis for not doing the next one and the next one. So I think this is a dangerous precedent myself, personally, to put this thing off and give one applicant that's come before us and ask for some. And and the and and I understand they've had some difficulty in property rights and acquiring right of ways and first one thing and another. But I'm not going to I'm not going to delay this just because just to open up a can of worms on somebody that's coming up in February who can't make the March number or whatever it is that we're looking at putting on this. So. Vice Mayor? Yeah, I, uh, it seems like we made a whole lot of concessions and had a lot of great discussion about percentages that we were going to apply. We, we pushed that date to January 1 from a, what was an earlier application. You know, 30 days doesn't seem like a lot, but it also doesn't seem like a lot. So, like, what are you really giving somebody at 30 days? Especially if you couldn't do it, right, if you couldn't do it before, you're probably not going to do it now. Like, I feel like I, I, I do agree huh. with you, Alderman um, Barnhill, that I feel like we're we're just going to keep kicking this thing. And, and there will be others that ask. Um, we gave a grand, a, sort of a graduated play that was already sort of a, a gift, or, if you will, or a, or a concession, if you will, I should say it that way. Um, I, I don't see a need to keep kicking these dates down the road. So you're not hiring my family. I understand. All of the pods. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Uh, just to confirm, uh, Mr. Stuckey, that's a fair summary of what uh, was provided just a moment ago. Correct. What 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 I said or what I will say to you is, when you pick any deadline, you're going to have somebody who's going to run up against it and have a cha have a challenge with it. That's just the nature of deadlines. You provided um, close to a year lead time for this. Uh, on a topic we've been talking about two and a half years prior to that in some form or another. So there's been a lot of lead time. This is an impact fee that relates to investments you have already made. The water plant upgrades and the wastewater plant uh, expansion and upgrades that are, are pretty much online, completely online now and is just finishing up. So it's not like it's something you won't incur for sometimes you've already incurred it. So. Uh, I offered the date as the best solution because they're talking about vesting and those kind of things, which is a moving target that varies by development. So I did make the suggestion to Alderman Berger to pick a date. If you're going to do it, just pick a date and move the deadline if you want to give people a little more time. So I, I, I offered that as a, as a place, but I also qualified it by saying whatever date you pick, you're going to have somebody who's running up against it and can't meet it for whatever reason. Um, and so that's you're going to have that whatever date you pick. So ba based off of that, sorry, uh, thank you for the clarification. I, I, I think I do. I previously agreed and going to agree again tonight. This is a slippery slope when we start moving this date. And this isn't about one particular individual or developer or anything like that. Right. This is about setting uh, a precedence. And I am concerned that if we if we move the finish line of when we're putting this into place, that it could definitely come back and bite us in the back. So. Well, well, it doesn't mean that we would have to do it again. No, exactly. <sighs> Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. All um, two things. One, um, I'm not thinking about a single person or yeah. situation here. So if you do that. If you're thinking outside of a single situation, there are the people that could come down to the deadline and who might go past, mm -hmm. and so we want to move it to help them. But if you're not thinking about individual, in, there, there could also be people who extended extreme e effort and funds, someone who, pay, who maybe spent more money to get it done before the deadline, to meet the deadline. And so you have these, like, you have these situations where the deadline, someone could have extended themselves financially and otherwise to meet a deadline, and you have these that go after. I think it's just fundamentally fair to keep it the same. I, I, I hate it. I hate it for the situation. Second thing is this, is that we did hear about the individual developments issue with the uh, proposed fee and that causing issues with their financing and whatnot. This was just the first phase of the water impact fee. I'll just leave it at that. Mr. Mayor, could I say one other thing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all I guess because this has <coughs> seemed like such a an unusual uh, fall and going to the first of the year, this 
this this last month or two or three <laughs> has been crazy. So exactly. maybe that's the reason that I'm feeling I could I could allow someone be, uh, to have a, uh, more more time because there were some things that you know over between Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything. There's just so much else going on, and including uh, you know work that the staff has to do and everything. That that uh, as I say, but maybe it's just that I'm feeling this particular year <laughs> has been <laughs> so so strange that that I, I I'm pushing to get things done in in December this year. So, but but I, but I do understand, and I, 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 I don't think that means that we have to do it ever again. Yeah. Uh, right. Along those same lines, though, those dates are always there all year long. So it's it's interesting that we're in this conversation. <laughs> I say let's call the question. And call the question. Well, well, I asked to speak oh. up before you called the question. I asked really? to speak. Really? I did. She did. I did. Go the ahead. mayor was trying to was get trying me to and <coughs> Thank you. I apologize. You all, yep. That's fine. Uh, I just don't. You have to vote on That's what call the question yeah. means. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so. You have to vote on call the question. Yeah, anyway. Okay, we got I a asked on to call speak, and he called on me. He, he had called on me, mm -hmm. and then Jason spoke. Yeah, but she still called it, so you'll All vote. Right. And then, and we have to call the question. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're voting on oh, calling right. the question. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes, sir. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. No. Vice Mayor. Yes. Alderman Potts. No. And Alden Baggett. No. Uh, so, uh, motion to call the question uh, passes six to two. We'll now have the vote. I think it was five, no, it was four five to four. three. Was it five to three? Yeah. Five to three. Oh. I'm sorry. Who did I miss that voted against it? Well, Burger, Potts, Baggett. I'll pull a Nancy Pelosi. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> five three. I didn't. I missed Mark. Screw it. Okay. So, we're ready to vote. Uh, on the original motion uh, to implement February 1, 2024. Okay. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh. Alderman Barnhill. No. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. No. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Alderman Brown. No. Alderman Potts. No. And Alderman Baggett. No. Uh, uh, the uh, motion fails five to three. <laughs> we'll now go to item number 15, consideration of reappointment of Brian Laster to the Historic Zoning Commission. <laughs> Brian's been serving uh, uh, for one term, I believe, and doing a great job, and I'd like to reappoint him and entertain a motion. Go ahead. <laughs> you stole one of me. I know. So. <laughs> you can say. I'll second my neighbor. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? Ready to vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. Fighting. Uh, next is a consideration of appointment to Bob Barrett to the Historic Zoning Commission. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Go um, ahead. I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> I'm gonna recognize you just a second. Let me just say how we got there. Yes, sir. Uh, we had about uh, we had a large group of applicants, and I was able to uh, interview the applicants along with uh, Jim Roberts, who's the current chair, and along with staff. And uh, it was a very difficult decision, but. Uh, we felt Bob Barrett was a very good selection. He lives in one of the historic overlays. He uh, uh, went to Omore College uh, and is very interested. In fact, he's so interested, he loves watching the uh, historic zoning meetings and his enthusiasm actually has started bringing him to the meeting. So I would entertain a motion to approve Bob Barrett. So moved. Thank you. Seconded by? Sure, I'll uh, second Alderman that. Blanton. <laughs> Let's vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger, Vice Mayor. Yes. Oops, I missed Alderman Berger. 
I said yes. Okay, thank you. Vice <coughs> Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. We'll now go to consideration of reappointment of Scott Harrison and Jennifer Williamson uh, to the Franklin <laughs> Municipal Planning Commission. Uh, these are reappointments, as I mentioned, so I'd entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you, Ann. Second. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Any discussion? Ready to vote. Vice Mayor, we're going to do this a little different. How do you vote? Yes. Sorry, Alderman me Potts. Up. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. And do I get a vote? No, no, yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. I'm beginning to feel like Alderman Baggett. Right. To wake you up, I'm going to tell you that we have a uh, uh, an executive session after this. So, oh, item 18 is reappointment of Mike Cassidy to the Sustainability Commission. So, move to approve. Thank, Thank you, Alderman Potts. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any discussion? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill? Yes. Alderman Blanton? Yes. Alderman Caesar? Yes. Alderman Peterson? Yes. Uh, Alderman Berger? Yes. Vice Mayor Brown? Yes. Alderman Potts? Yes. Alderman Baggett? Yes. Passes unanimously. Item 19 is appointment of Sean Iola, Ray Eldridge, and William R. Macon to the Civil War Historic Commission. Uh, Sean is with us tonight. Um, and uh, he was part of a large group of uh, people that we interviewed along with uh, 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 Rich Buckner, uh, who is the current chairman, and uh, Ray Eldridge is uh, a huh. Civil War uh, buff and is the head of uh, business department at David Lipscomb. William Macon is a retired Mayo Clinic uh, physician uh, who has a long history of uh, interest in the Civil War and has a lot of uh, family history related to that. So I would uh, ask for your approval of those. Move to approve. Thank you. Is there a second. 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 By Alderman Potts. Any question? Ready to vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. Uh, tonight we have Dorinda Smith, who hasn't gone to sleep yet. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that's a good quality for her because uh, we're going to appoint her to the Board of Zoning Appeals uh, to fill an empty spot there. And uh, uh, she brings a strong financial background and a, long, a strong analytical background uh, to this particular job. And I would look for a uh, move to approve. So moved. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. that. Very eager. First year alderman, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, just give to you. He's <laughs> out of hand I already. I will second there. <laughs> Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any discussion? You ready Good. to vote? Golly, Molly. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yeah. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. <laughs> and now we have appointment of Doris McMillan to the Franklin Transit Authority. Is there a motion? So moved, my food. Second. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any discussion? Let's vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. We'll now go to item number 22, which is a reappointment of John Schroer and Ashley Roberts to the Franklin <laughs> Transit Authority. Is so moved. A, thank you, Alderman Potts. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman Peterson. Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. This is unanimously. Next is a reappointment of Nan Zeridan and Ashley Roberts to the Franklin Public Arts Commission. Made for approval. Thank you. Second. Second by Alderman Caesar. Ready to vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. Yes. Passes unanimously. I need a motion to go into executive session. So moved. There's a second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
<laughs> All of us saw it, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Mark, I've seen you four times. <laughs> Oh, that's true. <laughs> oh. You know, he's old Nashville and. Okay, where'd we lose everybody? <laughs> They're back there discussing. They're, they're giving coal they to people. They better not be discussing. That's right. They no. better not. They're discussing giving coal to people. Okay, go sit down. We're ready to. That's my on. idea. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I forget. <coughs> I'm, I'm sitting here. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm in everybody's way. <laughs> All these people are bugging me. <laughs> you want to speak to an issue? Public comment is closed. <laughs> uh, Dave, we're trying. Sorry, we're back from executive <laughs> sessions. Are, are there any matters to be considered from the executive session? Yes. I would like to make a motion to allow the city administrator and city attorney to negotiate and execute a settlement agreement to settle outstanding issues with, with Infrastructure South, specifically to reimburse the city for additional engineering and staff costs in the amount of $850,000 plus $100,000 for optimiz optimization release to release liquidated damages to quite to close out the Franklin Water Reclamation Facility project with necessary forthcoming change orders. Is there second. a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman Blanton. Any discussion? Ready to vote. Alderman Barnhill. Yes. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. Yes. Alderman Berger. No. Alderman Brown. No. Alderman Potts. Yes. Alderman Baggett. No. Uh, the motion passes five to three. Is there any other matter? I have a motion, Mayor. Okay. Bye Alderman May. Blanton. I move that the city accept the counteroffer made in the city of Franklin versus McCall, that being settlement in the amount of $271,400 plus installation of the third sign option proposed by the defendant. This settlement would be contingent upon the sign receiving a certificate of appropriateness and following all applicable sign regulations when the sign is installed. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Alderman Barnhill. Any discussion? I just would have one request about transferability of the sign approval. And I don't know if uh, Alderman Amendment. Blanton would entertain amending her motion or adding you the lack amend. of transferability of this sign if the property ownership is transferred in the future. I'll amend it thus. No, wait, wait, wait. wait. That, that's, 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 that can, that well, can, wait a minute, Shauna. Well, can you? What did you say? I think I I'll think you want to make an amendment to yeah. it. You want to make an Get amendment. Not the good one. I think you want to make an amendment. <laughs> I, I think uh, what to Paul keep it Caesar separate. asked was whether she would accept a friendly amendment, and she said yes, oh. she would accept that amendment. But okay, no. if she if that that's fine. If 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 it doesn't pass because of the amendment. We'll added, then we're, we'll have to start over. Yeah. Just but, an no. but um, if and it's up to you guys how you want to do it, you can either do an amendment, yeah, and then we take that up, see if that passes, mm -hmm. and, and then take up the motion as amended or not. I'll, I'd like to make an amendment okay. to Alderman Br uh, Blanton's motion mm -hmm. to uh, include transferability of the or to restrict transferability of the sign. Mm -hmm. To if the property ownership is transferred in the future, okay. it would go back to. It would go back to the existing sign ordinance. Yes. Yeah. Second. Appropriate motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the amendment? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. No. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. No. Alderman Berger. Yes. Vice Mayor. Yes. Alderman Potts. Yes. And Alderman Baggett. Yes. Uh, the motion passes. Uh, the amendment is approved six to two. Uh, so we'll now go back to the original motion as amended. Are you ready to vote? I'd like to make one comment because this was the former award for, and, <laughs> and I think I think it's important for us as aldermen to say uh, <laughs> that 
while we respect the property owner's rights, that we do hope and would, would appreciate that, uh, that the, all the property owners, uh, when we do these kinds of projects, think about the community as a whole, what we're trying to do with the streetscape. And uh, if there is any kind of uh, uh, middle ground additional with the size uh, of the sign, that the property owner of their own volition would work with staff to try and have it fit the area. I think our citizens, if we did not speak up and say that mm -hmm. we don't think the size is appropriate for uh, the new streetscape, um, while we're okay with some of the features that the sign has, uh, uh, that, that if, if they would just work maybe with, uh, of their own volition, uh, to, to, to more conform with our sign ordinance and be a, be a community uh, player and, and still have the signage and the, and the verbiage and the, and the, the uh, prominence that they want uh, so that it fits on that corridor because we're really trying to do a lot on that corridor. So I say that respectfully to the property owner and, and those that might be listening that we, we desire uh, something more conforming but also understand uh, the desires of the property owner. Okay. I, I need to, I want to make sure that we understand or I understand. The amendment isn't necessary, is it? I mean, if it's it if it's if it's a sign and the and it comes down, and it's not put back up in 36 months. If the property owners change the property, all of this, that sign is not going to stay, is that? No. So they they have the they have the use and they can keep the use so long as they don't stop the use for 36 right. continuous months. But or it changes the ownership. No ownership no. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. no. Well, ownership is not going to keep the McCall sign there. Keep the structure. Yeah, yeah. Can keep the structure. And so long as the structure changes, the words can change. Remember the wall trip sign? They took wall trip down yep. and put the different logos in the yep. inside of it yeah. to you keep could, the. You could do that. Yep. Sure can. Okay. No, well, we've already, we, we passed it, man. But right. the motion. Any other comments on the amended motion? Ready to vote? Alderman Barnhill. Yeah. Alderman Blanton. Yes. Alderman Caesar. Yes. Alderman Peterson. No. Alderman Berger. No. All, Vice Mayor Brown. Yes. Uh, Alderman Potts. Yes. And Alderman Baggett. Yes. Uh, the motion passes as amended six to two. Are there any other matters to come before this body? Seeing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So motion to adjourn. So Alderman Berger, thanks for the motion. Second. And Alderman uh, Vice Mayor Brown seconded. And all in favor say aye. 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 Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.